Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Gardening. Today I'm going to be talking about starting some seeds in this new little grow light area that I've set up here on my bookshelf. As you can see we've got our Venus flytrap hanging out here and I just planted some basil seeds but we're going to be arranging a whole bunch of different things for the spring. I know it's a cold and dreary day out there today but we're going to have some fun this evening getting some seeds started. So let me get the lights turned on so we can actually see. This is my office. It's a lovely office. I love to work in here. I have some indoor plants in here and maybe at some point we will do an indoor gardening tour, but today we're going to be talking about starting seeds. So again, I don't know how my GoPro is doing the light balancing here, but I think it's working out okay. This, uh, this grow lamp, I've got an Amazon page pulled up. This is a Bright Labs LED grow lamp. Um, I'll just kind of show the page I'm looking at. I got it for 30 bucks on Amazon and as you can see here, it's got these kind of like hooks that it uses to latch on. I didn't want to take mine down off the bookshelf because it was a struggle getting it up, but you can kind of see here, uh, here's the top of one of those hooks. I've got it set up here. This is definitely not the most awesome place for it, but I really like it because it lets me, you know, see my plants and keep tabs on how they're doing while I work, which is really nice. And it's a full spectrum grow lamp. I got this for two purposes. As you can see, this is uh, the box it came in, has some information about the light spectrum that it puts out. Uh, some of the feedback I got from Reddit was that my flytrap might do a little bit better under a full spectrum lamp, so I decided to do that. Additionally, we're going to be starting some seeds for the spring. So I have my seed starting kit out here. My wife got me this seed vault kit for Christmas. It's a gardener's basic seed vault. It has a whole bunch of different cool things in it. Carrots, cauliflower, cucumbers, you know, there's 35 different types of seeds that are in here. Uh, okra and onions and all this cool stuff. But today we're gonna just do three of them. So I've got cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, and eggplant. And these should all be really cool. I've kind of grouped up my seeds in bunches of three here because when starting seeds, you're gonna almost universally start them uh, in groups of two or three just because not every seed is viable. I also have this habanero, which I took off my habaneros that are growing in the garage. I've got a whole bunch of plants under a grow lamp that are doing well, and I'm excited to see how those turn out. Additionally, I have this really cool little bushel of basil that came from my last house. I had basil that went into its flowering phase and put off some seeds, and these are almost designed to be used as seed starter. If you pull off some of the little seed pouches here, you can see these here have about three seeds in them each. You kind of rub them in between your fingers, the seeds come out, and I've gathered up probably about 10 seeds here, which we'll use to start. They're really tiny, and so it's kind of hard to keep track of. I've got some tweezers here to aid us, and I'm gonna go ahead and start lining up where we're gonna put our seeds in this grow lamp. And part of the purpose of me starting this video with the lights off is that you can really see these 12 squares here are getting the most light. There's absolutely a better way to uh, reposition this grow lamp in order to hit all 16 of my trays. I could have also used a cheaper tray, or not a cheaper tray, a better tray. This tray was $5 from Home Depot. I think it works well and I think it'll get the job done. So. We're gonna pick spots. Uh, part of the seed vault kit comes with these little labels, which are obviously totally unnecessary, but I find them helpful. And I'm trying not to knock my seeds on the ground here. And we're gonna just place these, not wherever. I want my tomatoes to do really well. I've had a lot of success with tomatoes. I also really love peppers, so I want those to do well too. We'll kind of put the eggplants off to the side. I don't really care how they turn out. I mean, it's not that I don't care. I'm just not concerned if they don't do well. And I've had success with cucumber in the past. I think I could do pretty well this year. So we're gonna line these up as follows. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna switch these around. I want um, my eggplant here and my tomato. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there. That's cool. So let's get some of these seeds placed. Again, I went through this habanero and picked out these seeds. It's not super hard to do, just gotta be careful. And this was really necessary to pick these out and I'm also filming, so I'm doing this with one hand, but it's probably easier just to grab them like this and just sprinkle them on. And if you're wondering about what depth to plant these at, I don't know if you're watching this video because you wanna learn about starting seeds or 
if you're just looking for some inspiration. This seed vault kit has some really cool, useful information on their packets. So this is the back of the cherry tomato packet. I don't know if you can read that well, but it's got information that includes days to maturity, germination, when you should start it indoors, uh, what kind of sunlight it needs, planting depth, and plant spacing. So right now we're obviously just starting them. We're not worried about plant spacing. That's gonna come later when they go outside. But right now we're gonna start these here and then transplant them outside later. So we'll take our cucumber seeds and just drop them off. Again, you don't have to use three. You could use one if you'd like, but I think using three just gives you better odds. And then in the next week or two, as they begin to sprout, we'll thin off the ones that don't look like they're doing too well. Put some tomatoes down. Oh, that was not the right spot. That's why you gotta label these. And eggplant. It's kind of hard to do this while I'm also filming. That, that makes it a little more fun. And so where did I put that tomato? I saw it drop. I might have to stop the camera here. Nope, found it. There it is. Get that out of there. Okay, so as for planting depth, the habaneros, I'm gonna just put them about a quarter inch down. I don't really think it's a big deal. I've had a lot of success with peppers. I think they've been by a long shot the easiest thing for me to grow. And they're also one of the tastiest things to grow. Uh, the cucumbers, it's at about an inch planting depth. Again, I don't know that that's that big of a deal. I've had successful and viable cucumbers that were grown in the, uh, the basin of a peach tree um, raised bed. So like competing for nutrients, not an awesome spot. Again, eggplants, it said really deep. We'll see. But I'm gonna just get these down under the soil, maybe half an inch. I think it's at a full inch. And my containers are fairly deep for the record. It's kind of hard to see from here and I, I don't wanna lift this up, but this is a good two and a half inches there. So they definitely have some depth to them. The other thing we neglected to do, oh, Excuse that, I guess we're having a winter storm warning. Uh, that is awesome, mid video. <laughs> well, that way you can know I really filmed it on Thursday night. So you're probably watching this on Friday morning. Don't go outside. It is very unpleasant out. Get our basil down in there. Lovely, cover everything up. And I think we've done everything except these tomatoes. There we go. Looks excellent. So I even have space for another row of something and maybe I'll put something in afterwards, but I wanna wrap up the video. And this little squirt bottle, I like to give our, our uh, resident gnat destroyer some water there. And then we're just gonna go around to each one of these little plots. I squirt sprayed that and nothing's in there. Um, we're gonna go around to these little plots and put down some water. I'll water these maybe once every two days. As you can see here, I'm not putting on more than two tablespoons of water. You don't have to soak them, we're just starting seeds. Seeds are super easy to start. I've done them before by putting them in a plastic bag inside and that method works okay. Obviously for these really, really tiny seeds, um, using a grow lamp should be a lot more effective. But we will just have to wait a couple of days and see how these turn out. And again, there are many other spots inside, in the garage, outdoors, that would probably be a better fit for this grow lamp location. I just love it because I get to sit here and game or sit over here and work and look at my lovely grow lights. But it's directly above my printer. So, I mean, I'm not saying this is the best place for it. This is just the place that I've chosen. I hope that if you're inspired to grow plants or rather start some seeds indoors, you find a lovely place to do so. Thanks again for watching Austin, Texas Gardening.